us that Jesus remains the same forevermore. Kingdoms may come and go. Generations may come and go. Governments may come and go. But Jesus remains the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. All other things may change, but Jesus never change. And so is the word of God. It never change. Pray right now that the word of God will be effective in your life. It will work to your perfection. And it will prepare you for the best of heaven. It will upturn all that needed to be upturned in your life. It will create all that needed to be created. It will destroy all that needed to be destroyed. The word of God will turn your situation around. Father, we are grateful unto you because of who you are. We have come again. Father, realizing that it is blessed to hear from you and to feed it at your table. Every day of our life, we feed on earthly food that we may live and grow. And we have come to feed on your word. Father, feed us to satisfaction. Amen. Father, let the nutrients that comes from your word be to our good in Jesus' name. Everyone that may be sick or weary in this place today, I pray that the power of the living God of heaven will reach out unto them and bring a complete and total healing to their spirit, soul, body, and family in Jesus' name. Every head that are bowed down, Father, I pray, they'll be lifted up in joy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. I told you last week that we are getting into a series on marriage and family life. And we looked quite a bit into the foundation of family. And we dealt with quite a lot of fundamental issues. And I told you that today I'll be looking at the causes and the effects of divorce in homes and families. But then as I began to prepare, I realized that those two things are so much... Uh, that it's not going to be easy to combine the two together. And so I'm going to look, if we can actually finish that, into some of the causes of conflicts and divorce in homes and marriages. And as we look into some of these conflicts, I pray that beyond all that will be said from here, God will open your eyes. God will open your ears. God will open your heart. That the best of God will come into you and the change will be with immediate effect in Jesus' name. We look at the scripture last week and we are going to return back to the scripture again today. Matthew chapter 5, we read it last week and let's begin from there. Looking at it from verses 31 through to 32. Matthew chapter 5, and if you remember very well, Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7 are the three major chapters in the scripture that is referred to as the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Mount. These are the chapters of the scripture in which Christ Jesus dealt with quite a lot of fundamental issues that has to do with human life. Chapter 5, verses 31 and 32 says, It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, and I told you, this is the most authoritative person in the world on any subject that is speaking here. He said, But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, 
saving or except for the cause of fornication causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. We dealt with that extensively last week. And I tried to make us understand uh, what Jesus was talking about in reality. Uh, if you quickly go to the book, same book of Matthew chapter 19, let's look at verses 3 through to 9, and then you will see, uh, and the, the same thing was dealt with, and Jesus was a little bit more elaborate. He went a little bit more in-depth, in dealing with that same issue, Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them? What? I didn't hear that. Yes. Loud and clear. Yes. Everywhere you go, never be ashamed to declare that God created marriage for man and woman, not for Adam and Joseph, not for Matthew and Matthias. It's for a man and a woman. Jesus went into the word of God. Why is Jesus appealing to the scripture and quoting the scripture and going to the foundation? Many people have problems in their lives and some of the things we're going to be dealing with is going to be having to do with foundational issues in many people's lives. In reality, as at the time of Jesus Christ, there were different schools of thoughts on the issue of marriage. Uh, one school of thought is that of Hillel that says that a man can divorce the wife for any reason. If your wife does not cook the kind of food that you like, what do you do? Divorce her. If your wife went to the market and came back too late, what do you do? Divorce her. If your husband, if you came from the part of the world I came from, if your wife wakes up in the morning and did not kneel down with her two knees on the floor to say good morning, sir, what do you do? Divorce her. If you live in the days of my grandfather and your wife is bringing food to you at the table and did not kneel down to give you that food, what do you do? As a matter of fact, I got married, I told my wife, if you're going to give me food, you know what I'm talking about. Your two knees must be at the table. I'm still praying for that to her. I think she did it once or twice. <laughs> Amen. But if she refuses to do it, what do you do? No, I'm not going to divorce her. <laughs> that is one school of thoughts. So they didn't just limit theirs to grievous error or sin just for any cause. You wake up one morning and you just don't feel like you still like the lady. She doesn't look beautiful again. Send her packing. But then there's another school of thought uh, of Shammai. And that one says, no, the only reason for which you can divorce your wife is if your wife commits adultery. And so, when you now come to Matthew chapter 19 and the Pharisees in verse 3 were asking this question, it was because of this background of the different school of thought in existence that made them to ask that question that, and you know, the Bible says, they asked the question for what purpose? Tempting him. When the tempter comes your way, you will overcome. Yeah. Tempting him. 
not because they really wanted the truth. Of course, they wanted to know, Jesus, are you on the path of Shammai or you are on the path of Hillel? And Jesus said, I neither belong to Shammai or Hillel. Hear the word of God. Anything that becomes controversial in life, never get involved. Stand firm on the scripture. The scripture can never be broken. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not the jot or title of God's word will pass without being fulfilled. So let's go back to the scripture, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the, uh, made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall become one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man. And that man includes your father. That man includes your mother. That man includes your brothers. That man includes your sisters. That man includes your employer. That man includes your president. That man includes the judges of your land. Let no man put asunder. And then, uh, the, let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And then Jesus again went into the scripture again. The scripture can never be broken. It's an everlasting foundation that nothing can shake. He said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you or commanded you or allowed or permitted you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Jesus said, the foundation of God standeth sure. Let whosoever that calls upon the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. The unbelievers may be doing it. The religious people of the world may be doing it. But if you belong unto God, this Lord of God is for you. He's binding on you. Others may disobey it. Others may relegate it to the ground. Others may treat God like dog. But you that says he is Lord and God over your life, honor him. Challenges will come, trials will come, temptations will come, problem will come. But remember, I gave you an example last week. I brought somebody forward and I said, if I slice this individual into two, does he remain alive? And you said, no, he's a dead person. The moment you are divorced from your wife, your life is dead. Your future is dead. Your hopes are gone. Your peace is gone. We're going to deal in detail next week with consequences of divorce and remarriage. And you can go on your own and begin to research. And some of these things, because of the nature, I go to the scripture and then I research on the internet also. Things are bad in our land. Things are bad in the nation. In time past, people that divorce wants to do it secretly. Right now, it, it is an open thing. As a matter of fact, re research made us to know that in 2000, so let me start with 1998. In 1998, 9 million people got married in this nation. Out of them, 4.3 million were divorced. In 1999, 8.3 million were married. 4.2 million of them were divorced. 
1999, eight, 90, excuse me, in 2000, 8.7 million were married. 4.1 divorce. We have been told that from experience and from statistics, 50%, about 50% of marriages will end up in divorce. And uh, I've forgotten the percentage now. I didn't get all those. But I didn't want to feed you with too much with all those so I can go into the scripture and into practicalities of things. Within two years of marriage, we're giving the percentage of divorces. Within eight years, we're giving percentage of that divorces. And then 20 years, and then down like that, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, why am I trying to let you know what is going on out there? If you try to pattern your life after the people of the world, you will go their way. You will end up their way. Look at most of the drug addicts children. Look at most of the violations in our time. Look at where those things are coming from. They are coming from divorced homes and families. Broken homes. That's the language. Broken homes. Your homes will not break. And so we see that we are in a serious, serious situation in our society. Most of the things you see on the television are not healthy. Go back to the scripture if you are a child of God. Most of the things you hear on the radio are not good for you. Go back to the scripture. All those therapies you have out there cannot really help you. Go back to the scripture. Dr. Phil has no solution to your problem. Go back to the word of God. You know Dr. Phil? Go back to the scripture. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Jesus said... Moses allowed it because of the hardness of the heart of the people. From the beginning, it was not so. When the leader says, do this, and you say no, do that, and you say no, what's the, what's the leader going to do? I'm here to let you know that in the scripture, there is something called perfect will of God. And there is something also called the permissive will of God. Which one will you prefer? You told a child, don't put your hand in the fire. If you put your hand, it's going to burn you. And the child says, no, daddy, leave me alone. I, the fire looks good. I need to put my... Son, don't put your hand. Why shouldn't I put... Put my hand. It's going to burn you. No, it's not going to burn me. Let me try it. Okay. Put it. That put it, is that the perfect will? That is the permissive will. Some of you are living in the permissive will of God. But heaven will bring you out. Some of your friends are living in the permissive will of God. Some of the people you know out there are living in the permissive will of God. But as for us that call upon the name of the Lord, the will of the Lord we will do. It may be tough. It may not be easy. As a matter of fact, uh, Peter said at one time to Jesus, light complexion like Oyibo. And you say, thus saith the Lord. It's a matter of time or whether it is the Lord or it is your eyes. It's a matter of time. Because when you come to pass off, I saw the will of God. I will never say you didn't see. You are the one that say you saw. After all, you come back and say, Pastor, I see another one. Oh. This woman, I say, the woman is, is a devil. I said, come on. What do you mean, a devil? You will not marry a devil in Jesus' name, oh. Pray. Tell somebody pray. The Lord will help you. 
some people are not committed to their marriage. They are not committed to their spouse. Some are addicted to all kinds of things. People of the world are addicted to drugs. They are addicted to other things. Even in the church, some people are addicted to some other things. Check yourselves. Some are addicted to pornography. Some are addicted to masturbation. Some are addicted to lust. Some are addicted to, to food. What is it that you are addicted to? If you're ever going to be addicted to anything, be addicted to your Bible. Be addicted to prayer. And do even those, do them with wisdom. Not when they say it is time for food, that's when you remember. That's the time to go and do to, to go and read some. Uh, is it some 119? Be careful. Now, if you are not married here, can I see your hand up? If you are not married, if I, I know some married people are here. I just want to see if there are really, really young, young people. Okay, I think you're all matured enough. God bless you. The next one I want to talk about is very, very sensitive. This one. No matter how good a chef you may be, and you cook the best of food, no matter how clean or neat you may be, and your house is spotless, if this one is not well taken care of, every other thing will be in vain. What is that? It is mostly done in the night. You know what I'm talking about? It is called S-E-X. Sex. Somebody say sex. I know you are too holy to say it. <laughs> and your parents didn't tell you it's going to happen when you get married. Please pay attention. It may be a laughing matter. But I can tell you this is one of the major things that has destroyed many homes. Some of the men's program, the women's program we have handled. We can stand here and tell you many believers' homes have been fixed by the grace of God. Because we look at the spade and we say, this is a spade, and we call it a spade. And we dare to teach directly. And there have been cases where even their husband will call and say, Pastor, thank you for that program. That since the program ended, my spouse has become a new person. The Bible says, you should not defraud your spouse. You should not defraud your spouse, not money now. Except because of fasting and prayer for a season. And even that, the Bible says, it must be with a consent. That means, if you are going to fast and pray, it must be with agreement with your spouse. Before you embark on it, you agree on the duration. It is for one day, two days, three days. Or one year. If your spouse says, yes, go ahead, go ahead. If your spouse says, no way, you better forget about that fasting. Because the crisis that will come on the fasting will destroy the effect of the fasting. The Bible says, men, deal with your wife with wisdom. So that your prayers be not hindered. When there is conflict in the family, prayers are hindered. When you deny your spouse of his or her legitimate marital entitlement, the Bible says you are a thief. Turn to the person and say, are you a thief? So, 
Somebody said, and I quote, that I did not know that I had been the source of the problem in my family because I always thought that I can only have relationship with my, with my husband only when we need baby. That means for as long as you're looking for a baby, you sleep with your spouse. Once the baby once you become pregnant, what do you do? Dead end. No road. She went back home, made things right, became a happy person. If you are sick, it's a different thing. Don't deny your sorrow. And please pay attention. Don't say because your wife or your husband is... You know, I used to think that it's only women that denies the men. But I have also come to realize and understand that men deny their, husband, their wives. There was a particular case that came. And I was wondering, this must be demonic, really demonic. And the woman said, Pastor, when everything failed in the night, I won't even wear anything so that at least my husband will be attracted. This man will not. And when I try to pull him, the man will run under the bed. I'm telling you the truth. You think it's a laughing matter? Somebody's crying. The lady is suffering. Another person came openly. They think they have tried secretly. It won't work. The person doesn't even care. She said, Pastor, I married. I got married because of this thing. If this man will not satisfy me, she won't, he wants to send me out. It's a serious matter. And you are there as a lady. You think you have a weapon to punish your husband. The Bible says you are a thief. If you die in that situation, you will never get to heaven. Is that serious? Because if the Bible calls it fraud, will thief get to heaven? Will armed robber get to heaven? Will family robber get to heaven? Tell your, the person next to you, don't be a thief. At other times, our time is gone, but I'll try to wrap it up now. Listen to this. Before I wrap it up, even those of you that are old, even at the age of 100, Abraham, was still a man. You know what I mean by he was still a man. Even at the age of 90, Sarah was still performing. How old are you? And then you say, eh, you know we are getting old. How old are you? That you are destroying your life, destroying your home, destroying your family. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Some of us, the problem is just dirtiness. Dirtiness. And I can tell by the way some of us live in this church. You brought your children. By the time you get up with your children, the whole place is messed up. And you left it like that. When I see things like that, I can tell how you are in your house. You know one of the reasons why I don't eat in people's houses? I'm just going to be honest with you. It's because some people are very dirty. And naturally, I get easily irritated. It's not pride or anything. It's just because I get easily irritated. When I see the way some people, whether men or women, handle things, Dirtiness, dirtiness. You are the man. You went to the bathroom, and some of you have done it this morning already. You finished using the bathroom, and all you did was just open the door and storm out of the bathroom. What happened to the soap in the bathroom? What happened to the water, the tap water there? 
It's meant for you to wash your hands. And after you finish, you came out. And then you saw, uh, brother, good luck. <laughs> and then, <laughs> Sometimes, I'm telling you the truth, after shaking hands, I look for the nearest place to wash my hands. Ask them in my family. One of the things I won't play with in this church is soap in the bathroom. You come to my house. There is none of the bathroom you get into my house that you won't find soap there. And if you're a guest, please pardon me, it's not pride. It's just that I know some people, they have done the exam, uh, the, what do you call it now, in this nation, the survey. And they realize that men are more involved with this. Women too, but the percentage is more of men. They just get there, they do their thing, and then they, they go out. They didn't know that the camera was installed to monitor them. And then they just come out of the place. And then your friend is eating. If I'm eating, you put your hand in the food, uh, I'm full immediately. If I didn't see you, wash your hand. Let's be neat. And then women. You are busy in the kitchen. And then the baby is crying. The baby is uh, doing something. You quickly, uh, the, the nose is running. And then you put on chop. And then <laughs> the rice. <laughs> After all, you forgot to put butter in the rice. Am I talking to somebody here today? Dirtiness. Some of you men, the same underwear you wore last week, Monday to Friday. The team is already getting some passenger. And then before you know it, kuru, 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 you know where you scratch. Come on, dirtiness. Sister, your mother back home in the village, when they woke up in the morning, let me ask mothers that are here, where are, where are they? Sister Wachuku, stand up. In the village, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you do, man. I'm sorry? Uh, she's not getting it. What's the first thing, Sister Eche? What's the first thing you do? You first sweep your environment. Before you start any kind of cooking, am I, am, I, am I right? Before you start cooking, before you start doing anything, the first thing is you, your environment must look neat and tidy. But here, yeah, we don't even have to buy a broom. We don't have to bend. I thank God for those women. Their backs didn't break because of that. You, you have the vacuum. Just to do that in boom, 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 it's a trouble. Your dining table. When you get out to eat, it's, only, it's not only you and your children that are eating there now. Roaches and ants are part of the guests at the table. Now we came to your house. I told you of the house I lived in Georgia. Trust me, it's not because we were dirty. That house was infested before we got there. The roaches in that house. If you come down, they'll be close to a million. When we moved out of the place, we had to ensure once we dry clean the cloth, it doesn't go back in, out. That's how we did everything. There are things we have to get rid of. 
Some of your houses are infested because of dirtiness. Neatness. And if your spouse doesn't like it, why don't you pray and change? And in case you don't know, there is also a spirit that has to do with dirtiness. You think it's just your nature. No, it's, a, it's an evil nature that needed to be dealt with. Some people, it's your mouth, your language, the way you talk. When you talk like this, dead devil, dead devil uh, body will rise up. Your mouth is sharper than two edges sword. And yet, your mouth is not the word of God. Deal with all these things. Examine yourself. That's what the Bible says. And I round up with that. There are more, but our time is gone. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. And I want to look at the first part of it. Maybe let's just look at the whole thing. Uh, because if things are not right in our homes and family, then most likely things are not right with, with our spiritual life. Verse 5 says, examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. If there is any crisis in your home or family, I may not have been able to mention everything. But whatever it may be, I know there are some of you that the problem in the family, and all this may not apply to you, but in some other places, because of childlessness in the family, whatsoever it is, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. I have not come to preach today to entertain you, but to make you think deep of your life, of your situation, of your family, and to enable you to know that if things are not right with your family, things may not be right with your spiritual life. Today is not a day to scream and shout in prayer. You examine your own situation. Examine your own family. Examine your own life. If you have interfered in people's family and you have created a problem, you can repent today. And do restitution too where necessary. If you have some baggages you have brought, either from your family or from your friends, you can drop them all at the feet of the cross. If you are under the influence of the spirit of the devil, you can be delivered. If you are the child that don't relate well with your, with your spouse or your in-laws, you can make right your ways. If you are the child that have no respect for cultural difference that are not contradictory to the word of God, you can talk to God about it and make things right. If you are selfish and self-centered and careless about what becomes of your spouse, Even when your spouse is sick, you must come forth. When your spouse is sorrowful, you must still come forth. Settle that with the Lord right now. If you are not completely separated from the world, your old friends, your old sinner partners, you still communicate with, with your old girlfriend, and you say you are a Christian. Deal with that right now. You are not the type that sits down to communicate and communicate well with, with, with your partner. Tell the Lord to touch your heart and to touch your mouth. You are not a good money manager. 
Deal with that between you and God. You are messing around and messing around with other ladies or other men. No all monger shall enter the kingdom of God. No adulterer, no fornicator will make it to heaven. You are breaking the heart of your spouse. You are making yourself irresponsible. Tell the Lord to help you. Tell the Lord to help you. You have been denying your spouse. You come under all kinds of excuses. You give all kinds of complaints. Whatever family planning is there to be done, go and do it. Marriage is meant for pleasure. Not just for having children alone. Most problems will be easily solved when there is a good relationship at night. When you don't deny one another. Said the Lord, my home will not break. My marriage will not break. In Jesus' name we pray. Now all eyes closed. All eyes closed. Camera people, no camera on anybody. Both cameramen, everybody, all eyes closed. You're here today. You've heard the word of God. And you know you have offended your own spouse. One way or the other. I just want to pray for you for grace. To be able to do the right thing. And God has touched your heart. And you know by the grace of God you want to make things right. I want to pray for you. If you just raise up your hand. You know you have done things against your spouse. Just want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put down those hands. Repentance will make us to go to the people we have offended and say, I am sorry. Humility will make us to go and say, I am sorry for all that I have done. And by the grace of God, the grace to do that, the Lord will give unto you. And your, if your spouse is hearing, forgiveness will wipe away the record of the past. As you forgive, as soon as your spouse comes, the grace of God will come. And life will begin afresh in Jesus' name. I want to pray for everybody. No hands going up because of the sensitivity of this issue. Whatever your own case may be, you know your family. You know your condition. If you just quietly lay your hands upon yourself and say, Lord, I'm supposed to enjoy my marriage not to endure it. I need your intervention. I need your grace. Every work of the devil in my marriage, Father, destroy them. Anything and everything I have secretly inherited and brought into this marriage that has made my marriage unhealthy and unproductive. Father, destroy those things quietly. Just talk to the Lord. I'll pray for you, but I want you to talk first. Because it is when you 
decide to put an end to the existence of the stranger, that the stranger will live. Anything in me, anything about me, walking against the peace and the joy of my home, Father, destroy them now. Destroy them now. If it is my tongue, Father, let my tongue be seasoned with salt, with grace, minister, with salt, ministering grace to those that hear me. Touch my tongue. You touch the tongue of Isaiah. Change my life. You change the life of Saul. Give me a happy home. Give me a happy life. Teach me to live. You are there. You pay attention to all petty, petty things. Father, help me to know how to overlook all that needed to be overlooked. Help me to be patient. Help me to endure with my partner. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. You have been wasteful, your spouse has always been telling you, you are wasteful, you are wasteful. Whether you agree or not, it's not the issue. Deal with that situation. You have not studied your spouse very well. You have not studied your spouse culture either. Tell the Lord to give you the grace to know your spouse better. Marriage and family is like a school. We are growing in it. We are growing in it. We are getting better day by day. You know yourself better. If your wife is sick, and the nature of that sickness is what is making you to think of separation or divorce, why don't you pray for the grace to love your spouse? your wife or husband, in spite of that condition. If you are single, tell the Lord to give you a happy home. The bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh, tell the Lord to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in humility we bow before you. And we declare who is sufficient unto all these things. We have tried to look at just a few things among so many things that causes problems and crisis in homes and families that makes us to keep enduring when we're supposed to be enjoying. That Things that makes us sorrowful when we're supposed to be joyful. Things that makes us to lose our appetite when we're supposed to be desirous of eating. Things that makes us to turn our backs to one another when we are together on the same bed. Things that makes us to regret the day we met our spouse instead of rejoicing and celebrating the day we came together. You know all these things, O oh Lord. You know them. Father, you are the solution to all the problems in human life. We repent in those and ashes, O oh Lord. In whatever way we have erred, in whatever way we have wronged ourselves, we repent, Father, and we pray for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, oh God, I pray. 
There are things that are happening that are beyond our imagination. Some of us have prayed, even fasted, to get some things taken care of, and yet they persisted. O God of heaven, King of glory, eternal God, everlasting King, I come before thee. I pray unto thee that all the works of the devil in every home and in every family, let them be destroyed in Jesus' name. You say, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I, says the Lord, will contend with him that contend with thee. Father, every spirit, every power of darkness, every principality and power, every rulers of darkness, every spiritual wickedness in high places, contending with our homes and families and children, Father, contend with them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Destroy their power. Amen. Destroy their works. Uproot every plantation they have gotten in our families and lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be a new beginning. Amen. Give us a Christian home. A happy home. A joyful home. A progressive home. Thank you for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.